All right, here we go. Question number 13 from our college algebra homework number one in my lab math wants us to graph the piecewise function here. And so what I've done is I've taken and copied that down over here in this window so we can work on it. And then since this is multiple choice, uh, really as soon as we get enough information to be able to uh, eliminate three of the choices, we'll be done. So it is possible we could get the answer without doing all the work, but what kind of teacher would I be if I don't show all the work? So we're going to go through how to graph this by hand completely, and then we'll come over and pick the right graph. And then just for fun, we're going to throw it into Desmos to show you how to do it here. All right, so let's look at how to do this by hand. And the first thing that I want you to notice is that we have three pieces and two what I call transition points, okay? So there's three different pieces of function. When x is negative 3, we're going to transition from the top to the middle piece. And then when x is 1, we're going to transition from the middle to bottom piece, okay? So the way we're going to graph this is with the table of values. So we're going to start with x and y. And we're going to work from top to bottom. Starting with the top piece, we're going to need an x that is less than or equal to negative 3. Let's don't go too far. How about negative 4, okay? And then you do have to use the transition point. So we are going to use negative 3. And what that will do is that will give us two ordered pairs for the top piece, okay? And now we're going to use the transition points, the negative 3 and the 1, for our middle piece, negative 3 and 1. Now you may, may be thinking, wait a second, you already used negative 3. Well, guess what? If it's a transition point, you have to use it for both pieces. Even if it's not true, like uh, in the middle piece, x really cannot be negative 3 because it doesn't say equal, but we're going to let it be negative 3 so that we can see what it approaches as it gets close to negative 3. And then we're going to need two x values for the bottom piece, okay? So remember we have to use the transition point as one of the x values. And then I'm going to need another x greater than or equal to 1. And again, you don't have to go far. Let's say 2. So this will be the middle piece. And this is the bottom piece. And so with actually, if you look at what we've got here, none of these x's have like square roots or uh, squareds or anything. So they're pretty much all going to be linear and the least amount of points you need to make a line is two. So we're going to be able to get by with just two points. All right, here we go. For the top piece, we know that both of those x's are going to plug in to this x right here. There is a negative out front already, so that's going to make our x's become positive. And then we just need to add one, okay? So that's going to be five and four. And it is important to note that this point will be solid because uh, x can be negative 3 here because it says equal. Now, the middle piece is constant. So both of these values are going to be 5. Both of these values are going to be open circles because look at what the inequality says. It says it cannot be equal to negative 3 and it cannot be equal to 1, but it can get really close. So since it doesn't have the equal to part, those are going to be open circles. And do you understand why they're 5? It's because there's no x to plug into. And so whatever x is in that range there, the y is going to be 5. Last, we're going to plug in the bottom x's in to the bottom piece, and that means we're going to multiply by negative 4. So that'll be negative 4 and negative 8. Both of those will be solid dots. Well, actually, this one will be solid dot because that's a transition point, and it does say equal to, 
And this other one's actually not going to be an endpoint since it can keep going. All right, so there they hardly all fit on one screen, but we're going to see if we can make this graph fit over here, okay? I'm going to try to squeeze it in over here. One, two, three, four. So at negative four, one, two, three, four, five, we're at five. And at negative three, we're at four. And so this piece is doing something like this. It's going to keep going back to minus infinity, but it's going to stop when it gets to this point, negative three, four, and it will be a solid dot. And then we transition to the middle piece, okay? So here the middle piece says if you're at negative three, you're at five. Remember, that's an open circle. And that's going to be constant all the way over to one. There, all the y values are five, open on each end. And then when we get to the bottom piece, if x is one, you're at negative four. And that is a solid dot. And then if you go to 2, you're at negative 8. So that's going to be going way the freak down like that, okay? So with those, I would call that just a few points there. To, it's six points. We get the graph of the function. Does that happen to match any of our uh, choices? Where we have open circles... And then this one is below, and this one's down here. Looks like it's going to be C. That is the one that looks like what I drew. Now, before I click check the answer, I want to have Desmos, you know, check that just to make absolutely sure that it's right. All right, here we go. F of X equals. And if you didn't watch the other videos, here we go, step by step. Go to the, uh, usually this is down. Go to the keyboard, ABC braces and then it's condition colon function so the first condition was x is less than or equal to negative three colon and the function was negative x plus one and then comma and then you do the next condition and function okay so the next condition, negative 3 is less than x is less than 1. Colon, the function is constant, 5. Comma, next condition, x is greater than or equal to 1. Colon, function is negative 4x. And if I hit enter, there you're going to see... Bam, look at that. Looks exactly like what I drew up here. That looks the same, looks the same. Mm, feels good. Man, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.